Hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I am the creator behind Birch and Lily. Um, Leia, my little corgi puppy, and I are here today to bring you another new episode. Um, and yeah, I have lots of fun stuff to show you. Little disclaimer, first of all, obviously I have a corgi in here so you might hear her a little bit. <laughs> um, but also, I have been waiting all day and hoping that my neighbor will be done hammering on his garage. But he's not. And so I hit the point where I couldn't wait any longer and it was just time and I needed to record this episode so I could have it up for you guys tomorrow. So if you do hear a little bit of hammering, I apologize, um, but I'm hoping my yammering on will kind of drown that out. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, other than that, there are a couple places you can find me on the internet. They'll all be linked down below. The main one though is virtualnilyfiber.com. So let us jump on in. I have so many finished objects and I'm so excited. I have kind of hit a point where, and I hit this every once in a while, I, I don't know why, but where I kind of want to clear off my needles and finish projects that are close to being finished. And so I have been doing that and I have two finished pairs of socks and a cross stitch piece to show you today. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, this first pair, you haven't even seen it all. These are the freckle socks. This is a pattern I have been testing for Sarah OP. Um, I will make sure her Instagram is linked down below too, if I can remember. Um, but these are so cute. Like I said, they're called the freckle socks. I cast on 56 stitches for these. Um, it uses a provisional cast on and that's how you get this really cute, um, that's not a pico, what would you call that? Scalloped? scalloped edge. It actually matches the color on my sweater, which is kind of funny. Um, but anyways, yeah, they have a scalloped edge and then this beautiful color work like freckle pattern. Um, this is a German shirt roll heel. I'll be honest, they don't fit me the greatest, but that's what the pattern called for and I was testing it, so that's what I did. Um, but I think it will be fine because these are shorty socks. Um, and they're going to be more of like a summer slipper type sock for me. So I'm not terribly worried, but, uh, yeah. And then I believe the pattern has a rounded toe in it as well. So I am so in love with these. <laughs> I, I love them so much. Let me pull them off the blockers so I can show you that way as well. They're just the cutest little socks. Um, so I knit these out of two colors of yarn, obviously the color... The main color there is my yarn in the colorway Sweet Pea. I think there is one skein left in the shop. Yes. And now my yarn hung up behind me, my pegboard is done. So that's super exciting. Um, there's one skein left in the shop and I am going to be dyeing up a little bit more this week, I think. So if you look in the shop and it's not there, keep an eye out for an update coming soon with Sweet Pea. It's seriously one of my favorite colors. And then the black in there is just Knit Picks. Um, this is their Muse base in the colorway Exquisite. It's the same color that I used for my plaid blanket socks, which I finished last episode. I had some left over, so I thought I would use it. And shockingly, I still have some, so I can probably, I don't know if I'll make another pair of these socks or what I'll do with it, but I have probably a good 45 to 50 grams left of that, so. That's kind of exciting. Um, I, let's see, what have I missed? These are 56 stitch socks, like I said, the provisional cast on. And yeah, I'm just so incredibly happy with these and I think they're adorable and I cannot wait to wear them. Maybe I'll wear them today actually. Now that I've shown them. No, I can't. I have not photographed them for Instagram yet and they need to be all pretty and blocked, so. I need to photograph them and then I can wear them. But yeah, I think that is about all I have to say about these. Shall I show you some cross stitch I finished? Um, I will pop a picture on the screen because I'm going to try to be better at putting screenshots from the previous episode. Um, but this is where I was last time I was working on this. This is my early days by Plum Street Samplers. And guys, it's done. I don't know how I finished this, but I did. And I'm very pleased. It's so beautiful. I am so happy with this, like so incredibly happy. Um, and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna frame it in. I don't know. Um, I haven't even measured what the finish size is, to be honest. 
to even think about a frame, but uh, I do have one. No, I had a frame kicking around that I got for free from somewhere that I thought maybe it would fit in. It's sitting over there on the ground. It will not fit. I can tell that already. Um, but this, yeah, my early days, Plum Street Samplers. So happy with this. Uh, it's stitched on 40 count stone gray linen one thread over two linen threads. Obviously, if I'm doing one over one stitching, it's different, but the majority of it is one thread over two linen threads, and I used all the call for threads. There's a lot of DMC in this, which is awesome, and then a little bit of over dyed, so. <sighs> I never know what to say about cross stitch, but I am so pleased that this is finished. And I'm sorry I didn't iron it, but I never feel like ironing it until I'm about to, like, totally frame it. So, it's what it is. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad it's done. And I have started something new. Which I'll show you later. Because, of course, when you finish something, you have to start something else, right? So that's what I did. Clearing knitting needles. Kind of not clearing cross stitch, but... Whoopsies. I have one more finished knitting project. Uh, these have an interesting saga to them, but uh, they're finished nonetheless. These are my easy peasy socks, which are not so easy peasy. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm happy they're done. I'm happy they're off my needles and they are beautiful. I will, I, I'm not going to deny that they're not beautiful, um, but they were not as easy peasy as I expected them to be. I think part of the problem is maybe I read the instructions too fast and didn't pay as much attention as I should. And the wording was a little hard. I kind of think, and I'm not 100% sure, um, that the pattern may have been translated from a different language, and that could be part of the problem. Um, but yeah, this pattern is, like I said, the Easy Peasy Socks by Carolyn Adamzik. Um, I will have it linked below if you're brave enough to start it. Um, but I wouldn't do it if you are a beginner colorwork sock knitter because you're going to have to be able to fiddle and fudge a couple things here and there. Anyways, I cast on 60 stitches for these socks on 2.25 millimeter needles. It's a 2x2 two two rib that I did at the top there. The colorwork. And then I did... I did... Basically everything is called to pattern. This heel flap is totally as called to pattern. Um, now here's here's part of my saga. I don't know if you can tell this, but the decreases on these socks look different. I I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell it on camera, but somehow oh you can yeah you can. Do you see how that stripe there is red, but on this sock it's white. I made notes on how I did the bottom of the foot, how I picked everything up, what I did, and then I got to the toe and I realized that they were going to be opposite. And at that point, I was so ready to just have these socks done that I just, I, I just did it. So you can tell too, even like going up this, oop, the sides of the socks here and here, the bottom of the foot is different a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. I don't know how else to describe it. Anyways, you know, they're still going to be beautiful socks. If I don't tell anyone, I don't think anyone's going to know. Like, do, do they even really... Here, let me flatten them out better. <laughs> they don't look that different on the front of the sock. The only thing that's really different, if you can tell right where it transitions into the stripes on the toe from the rest of the foot, the pickup is different, and where the stripes line up is different. But I I was ready to just have these done, honestly. I, I, yeah. I love how they look. Everyone compliments me on them. Like, my husband looked at them and he was like, wow, those are gorgeous. Yeah, they're gorgeous, but they just, ugh. It wasn't fun. Like, I was looking at my show notes here, and since the last issue I had had on them, I hadn't touched them in, like, a month and a half. Yeah, the last episode I talked about them on was January 31st. 
So it's been a long time since I touched these, almost, almost two months probably. And I just, I looked at the bag one day and I was like, I just, I have to finish these. So they're done now. They have many mistakes, but I'm happy that they're done. So, and I'm happy that I have yarn left over quite a bit actually from both colors. So, cause I love both of these yarns and I'd pick them because I love them. This here is Woolberry Fiber Co on their 100% Superwash Merino base. Uh, the colorway is Flannel Pajamas and this is Bull and Vine in the colorway Deck the Halls on an 80-20 sock base. I love both the colors so much. And so I'm glad I have lots left of each. So I'll be able to knit something else out of both of them that probably won't make me so grumpy. <laughs> But yeah, it is what it is. Um, and I, I don't want it to deter me from doing more color work socks because I had tons of fun on the leg and I did have fun on the foot doing it like when it was just in the round and there was no decreasing or anything. So it's not that I don't enjoy color work socks. I just had a hard time with the pattern. So I'm trying to think. I think I said everything that I wanted to about them. Um, but these are going to go now into my Christmas box of socks. I am participating in the Great Woolberry Christmas Sock Make Along. I think that's what it is. I'll put it across the screen and in the show notes as well because I have a hard time saying it. But these are a pair of socks for that. So I'm excited to have them done at least and going into my Christmas box of socks. And they're still going to be warm and cozy even though they don't perfectly match. So yeah. That is those. And that brings me to the end of all my finished objects. So I have a couple knitting things to show you. And then I think I'll do the cross stitch after that. Um, but yeah, I have one new knitting cast on since last time. And I have it in my That Crafty Little Fox bag. Um, mostly because this is the bag that I had my freckle socks in. And what I'm doing is using up the rest of my Sweet Pea skein. So like I said, this is the colorway Sweet Pea. I wish it wasn't blowing out so much. It's really pretty. It's a whole bunch of pale pinks and purples and apricots with speckles of blue and like a deep aubergine plum color. It's beautiful and the camera blows it out so bad. But I am knitting up out of this yarn a pair of arrow leaf socks. Uh, this is a pattern from Lindsay Fowler of Larkspur. I can never remember if it's Knits or Larkspur Handmade. One of those. Um, but it's a beautiful pattern. And believe it or not, I knit one sock in a day. I still don't know how I did it because we actually tiled a part of our laundry room during that same day. But I knit one whole sock. So <laughs> that is this. And why are you blowing out? Can I hold it really far back? Anyways, it's a beautiful sock. Um, I love the heel flap on it. And the fun thing is, I'll show you the front of this in a second, but each sock is opposite of each other. Um, so one goes in one direction and one goes in the other. So then when you wear them, I don't know. It's really cute. <laughs> Anyways, I cast on 56 stitches for these, 2.25 millimeter needles, which is US one. And I did a two by two rib on them. That is what the pattern calls for. And then I think everything else on this sock is to pattern as well. So yeah, I have a hard time complaining about, well, why would I complain? But Lindsay's patterns are wonderful and I usually just follow what she says, to be honest. Um, she's very talented at sock patterns. So here is the front of the sock. So you can see the V pattern. So then on the other sock, each of these sides, so like this side will be in the place of this one. Does that make sense? I guess I could show you actually by holding up the second sock what I mean. See how they're opposite? Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's so simple, but it's really cool. And so the heel flap, if you can see how it leans, oop, this is hard when you're opposite on the computer, um, leans that way. So then on the other sock, it'll lean this way. So yeah, it's just really beautiful, really simple texture. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why I knit it so fast. 
Um, it is charted and I think it has written instructions as well, maybe. Don't quote me on that. I think it might just be charted actually. Um, but either way, very simple. All just knits, purls, and yarn overs, and then there are some knit togethers and slip slip knits as well, but very, very simple stitches. Um, so yeah, that is the first sock. It's got a rounded toe on it, which is included in the pattern. Um, I knit the cuff for 15 rounds as per usual. And yeah, I love these so much. And like I said, I've cast on the second one already. Um, I'm just ready to put the heel into this now, I think. So, on a roll. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. Um, and I love being able to use some of my yarn as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Did I say that is on my birch sock base? It's an 80-20 fingering base. So, yeah, those are the arrow leaf socks. Then... I have a shawl to show you that I actually put a progress keeper on so you can see what I've done since last time. <laughs> this is my good old brioche and mystery shawl. It's a pattern by Suzanne Summer and I am knitting it out of some pretty yarn. Ah, uh, these three colors, oh, I'm gonna lose my project bag. These three colors are from Hey Sister Yarn Co. They're no longer dyeing yarn, um, but this is called Queen Buttercup. Halcon is in the middle, and this is matte lip. I won't talk about them too much since you can't get them anymore, unfortunately. And then this pretty color here, this is Sugar Plum Circus Yarn, and I always mix up, it is sea glass. I always want to say sea foam, I don't know why. But beautiful yarn, and like I said, oh, project bag. I'm so out of it because I'm so busy today and I'm trying not to take too long on this. First of all, because I don't want to put up a crazy long episode for you, but also because I have lots to do today. Um, but this is another That Crafty Little Fox bag. And I, for brioche, I have got a decent amount done on this. More, more than I, th I thought I would, especially considering I've been doing a lot, a lot of sock knitting over the past little while, and I obviously finished two pairs of socks. So, I'll show you that progress keeper there. That is how much I've got done Oop, since last time. Just a little bit. Um, and I'm just continuing. This is like a syncopated brioche section. I wish it wasn't blowing out so much. It's a little better back here. I tried moving around my setup and my lights today in hopes that it would maybe fix the color issues. It kinda... I think it's my phone and I don't know what setting to change. I tried to look so that it stops auto-correcting so much like this and I can't find it. <laughs> this is a little bit better showing of the colors. Better than if I get closer, then it really washes it out, but... Yeah, I, I won't go too much into this because I talked about it lots in the last episode, but I have got some done. Um, but I'm feeling like knitting socks again, so I haven't been spending tons of time on it. I am going to move up my progress keeper though. Um, but let's see, I'm, I'm knitting this on 3.5 millimeter needles. That's a US 3. Um, I believe I dropped down a needle size from what the pattern calls for. Um, just because I know I knit my brioche really, really loose, so I wanted to make sure that it was still squishy. So, yeah. Um, I, like I said, I won't go into that too much to save you rambling on something I've barely got anything done on, but I still wanted to show you a little bit. So, yeah, that is, that's what I've been working on for knitting. I finished lots of stuff and now I'm kind of at the point where I want to clear off the rest of my knitting needles. I think I have, well I have my movie knitting socks on needles which I'm not terribly concerned about because those are just like vanilla socks so those don't really count. Um, and then I have the arrow leaf socks that I showed you and I think two other pairs on the needles. Let's look at my previous notes. Um, I think 
past, let's see. <laughs> I don't know if I ever showed, there's one pair of socks I don't think I ever showed on here. I think I forgot I even had them. <laughs> um, and I can't even remember the name of them, but let's see, when is this? Yeah, so it seems there's a pair of socks I've never shown on the podcast, um, but I'm knitting them out of some Explorer Knits and Fibers yarn in one of their Christmas colorways. It's mistletoe something, I think. Um, but I'll make sure I show those next episode. So I have those to finish. And then I also have... Um, oh, I have all the socks I'm knitting out of that, like, one-of-a-kind yarn of mine, all the shorties that I'm doing. Those I'm not terribly concerned about either because... I get bored of the yarn for a little while and then I'll pick it up again. It's not like, it's because I'm using the same yarn over and over. It's the same color, so I get a little bored. So I'm not, not going to put too much pressure on myself with that. But there's another pair of socks. You know, the week I talked about them, I must not have written show notes. <laughs> um, so there's definitely another pair of socks on my needles that I'm knitting just out of some commercial yarn that I know I have to finish as well. They're for my mom. Um, but yeah, I feel accomplished. I like clearing off needles. Every year I kind of hit this point where I'm like, okay, I want a clean slate and then I can cast on all the things. And I'm kind of at that point. So <laughs> that's what my goals are for knitting lately at least. But let's, let's show some cross stitch. So I have a new start and it's adorable. It's in this little project bag from Pretty Southern. It's a smaller one. <laughs> but I am okay with that. And I am cross-stitching Corgi Caboodle. Uh, this is a pattern from Plum Street Samplers and it's perfect because I have a Corgi. I saw it and I knew I had to do it and it's going really fast because it's tiny. <laughs> so it's been really fun. Um, I told myself once I finished my early days that I was allowed to start this. <laughs> so that is what I did. Um, these are all the colors. I love that it is all stitched in DMC. I love, love, love that. Stop blowing out, please. It's really only the, what, what's the word I'm looking for? The darker color, uh, not the darker, the white that's blowing out a little bit, but that's white, so. And as I'm combing these, I found something that didn't get cut. Oops, anyways. Uh, so yeah, it's all DMC. I love that. I love, love, love that. Makes it a very affordable project. And this is where I am. Look at it. Look at that little corgi. <laughs> The very top tiny one looks just like my Leia, and the other two, sweet enough, look like her parents. So, I love that. And really, I don't have much to do. Like, that bottom corgi on the stack, there's just a little bit of grass below him, and then that's like the whole piece. So, and I'm sure I've popped a picture up on the screen, but it's just adorable. I love it so much. I'm stitching this up on just like a scrap piece of 40 count bramble that I had, leftover from which I can never point in the right spot but you can kind of see the corner of it there my Mary Mary needleworker piece I stitched that on 40 count bramble and I had this little scrap left I'll still have some leftover when I'm done but I thought the green tones in it looked really pretty with all the pink so I love it I'm stitching this one thread over two linen threads and I'm pretty sure I'll have it done by next time it's just really fun and I'm liking that and I'm liking that I'm getting a really quick finish. I don't know, it's satisfying because <laughs> a lot of my cross stitch pieces are just massive. The next one I'm going to show you being one of them. So it's nice to kind of feel like I'm flying through one. So super cute. Paulette Stewart of Plum Street Samplers has a whole bunch of those stacks. I did one a couple of years ago that was a whole bunch of llamas. I think it's called Llama Lump and I'm trying to think where I have that. I don't think I framed it yet. It's probably in my under the bed storage. I really should frame that though. It would look cute somewhere in here. Um, but there's so many of them. There's one with a sloth and a pig. They're adorable. If you're looking for a really quick, tiny stitch, they're great. May I recommend the corgi ones? Oh, I have to show because it's so sweet. Um, and I won't give away any information because it's just the back of the pattern. But look at this is the little corgi it was based off named Noki. <laughs> I believe it's her daughter's corgi. Yes. But 
It's so sweet. So every time I pull this out to work on, I see that little corgi picture and that makes me smile as well. But yeah, that's quick and easy corgi caboodle. The other project I pulled out from like hibernation for quite some time, I think, um, is in this bag, also pretty Southern. This is Savior's Praise by Shakespeare's Peddler. And I feel like I'm getting a lot done on this as well. Um, here are the threads. These are, there's a mix of Weeks Dye Works and Anchor threads in here. And they're kind of messy, but is what it is. I'm stitching this on, I think it's 40 count beach brew. Uh, and I'm doing again, one thread over two linen threads. I won't have a screenshot for this cause I can't remember the last video I showed it in, but I'll make sure I take one from this video for next time. Anyways, this is where we are. And I have been working down on the border on the right hand side there to that house. And there's a little bit of something else below that house, but then I'll be done the whole border on that side. And that's kind of my goal now. I kind of want to finish the border on the whole piece. I feel like that would be satisfying. Plus there's the most color changes on the border. And I think that was kind of what was wearing me out, but now I'm not minding them so much. So I figure I might as well just work away on the border and get that done. So it's just so pretty very wrinkled but yeah that is where I am with that and I feel like keeping that one out for a while too we'll see <laughs> with cross stitch I don't really set myself too many goals because like I said I have so many massive cross stitch projects that I can't really be like hey I want to clear my cross stitch out because that ain't gonna happen so <laughs> is what it is um but yeah that that's what I've been working on over the past two weeks um I did want to let you know that last week's seven o'clock p.m eastern time upload time went quite well obviously this episode is going up at 5 p.m eastern time we'll see where they um land how it goes but I am leaning towards having an evening upload time on Tuesdays now instead of morning. Um, so definitely keep your eyes out for me in the evening on Tuesdays now. Obviously, depending on your time zone, it will change. Um, but that's kind of where I'm leaning with that. Um, also, make sure you check out the shop. Like I said, I should have an update of Sweet Pea soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to dye it up on DK or fingering weight. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in some which base you would like it on. Both bases are beautiful. I love my DK. It's 100% superwash merino. And then an 80-20, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon fingering white base. That's my absolute favorite for socks. So of course I love it as well. I wouldn't bring anything into my shop <laughs> if I didn't love it. Um, but yeah, where was I going with that? I think just saying check out the shop. I would appreciate it very much. And I want to thank you as well for joining me today. I hope you found something you loved or you had a little bit of inspiration or just some rambling background noise for your crafting pleasure. <laughs> um, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Also hitting the like button and the notification button it helps me out a lot. And it also helps you because YouTube is bad at showing you when I upload my videos. So if you hit all of those, you should hopefully get notified every time I have a new video. They're always every second Tuesday, time to be determined. Um, but I appreciate you so much and I hope to see you again in two weeks. Bye.